everyone, this is the Dinosaur Hunter here. Now this is a quite a requested video and be a good idea to help out. So I'm going to make a quadrupedal walk cycle and a biped walk cycle. And this is sort of like a slight tutorial on how to help you make this creature like your creation stick figure move on stick notes. Now you want to have the onion skin sent to front. So you can see the transparent um, area of where your creature was previously. Now this is a pack. So the, the body parts are separate from the rest of the body. So what you want to do is you want to move them as precise as you can with the rest of the body as the body moves along. And you want to get it really, really good. Because what I'm about to do is I will tween this animation. And tweening is it wants you to get this as close as possible. The head is the all is the hardest point of when you make a pack. If it's one stick figure, just one whole stick figure, it's easy to animate. This will it's like it'll be very easy to animate with one single stick figure. But this is a pack. So we're starting out with a little bit of some hard stuff here. As you can see here, I'm moving the leg. And you want to try and get the where the foot's landed to the ground as close as possible with the transparent part. Just along as the body moves. So like the foot is sort of rolling on the ground. So it goes um, the foot, the back of the foot first, and then the toes go up last. And the same thing goes with the hands here. You just want to move the rest of the body there, so... Now you see what I'm about to do here is I sort of made the arm, this uh, the, that arm move a little bit differently. The fingers are a little bit splayed out just a tiny bit when the arm moved up. It did something differently than the arm that I moved just before that during the first step. Now it's going for a little bit more realism. When an animal or a person walks, you know, they're not going to exactly walk 100% the same way constantly, you know. Humans constantly move, believe it or not. Uh, from what I know a long time ago when I was a wee little lad, humans constantly move, you know. Their fingers don't exactly stay static. You can look at your hand and it doesn't, your fingers won't stay static, they'll move. Just a tiny bit. But this goes for an example when an animal walks, you know, it's not going to, it's, it's first, it's front arms probably might move differently. One moves one way, but the other might move just slightly different than the other arm. That's what this is going for. It goes for realism. It makes the animal walk and run or whatever a little bit more realistic when the rest of the body moves differently. So yeah, it's also good with packs. As long as you get things close together in the right space as you had it in the first frame. Just as close as you can get it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You gotta get it as close as you can get it though. So see here I'm on like 
say, I think eight frames on this, eight or seven frames. Uh, and the tween frames are at eight. If it's a low frame, I always have it at eight uh, tweening frames. Uh, normal frames, I would go for eight or seven if you're making an animal walk, or if you want to have it walk very, very slowly, like say a turtle, for instance. Uh, we'll probably have it about like five or four. Give it that slow move. Even though turtles, in reality, they don't really move slow. <laughs> Maybe Galapagos does. Galapagos tortoise uh, moves a little bit slow, but little tiny turtles, they, 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 are, they move quick. Anyways, so yeah, you want to have that animal feel like it's walking, so you want to go for a nice strolling look for it, like it's sort of strolling. So you go for a little bit of a few low frames. Now if you want the animal to run or speed walk per se, uh, go for go for fast frames, you know, a fast rate. Tweening, eight or seven. So we're moving the arms here. Onion skin will help. It always have it at onion skin. When you're animating something, I always have. When I animate, I always have it uh, at the onion skin. And then you want to have it show to the front, and that's how you get it. So I'm moving the head there, like again, this is a pack, so it's a lot harder to animate. So it may not be 100% perfect, but it's close. And if it's a stick figure that has all the body parts connected to it, like say the classic stick figure that you see when you open the app, it's, it's easy to make a walk animation with, you know. It'll be easy to do. Uh, say a dinosaur with all the body parts connected to it and it's not a pack, then it's again, it's easier than what I'm doing here. But when you make a pack, the onion skin helps. It always helps. I always use it unless I forget to use it, which it's kind of not a much of a, uh, not many times I do that, but it happens. I moved the head a little bit. That's another sign of the realism, you know. Animal moves its head. Different body parts will do something different when an animal walks, you know. They'll always move in some different direction than the rest of the body goes. A tail could move up and down when a dinosaur walks. Uh, the head could move as it walks, looking down, or just when the, uh, the weight of the animal, sort of like when it makes a step, or it's going down like a little hill, the weight of the the body will go down and go with the rest of the body. So the head would shake a little bit when it goes down a hill or something. To get it adds more realism because the rest of the animal is moving along and gives it more character. And some people are asking about how I make the animals blink. Basically, is I add a little, no a little long node above the eyelid, send it to the front. That's the same color as the rest of like the uh, skull cavity or whatever uh, Same color as that so it can blend in with everything and just use it It makes the node just go up and down and there you go You got a blinking dinosaur and you don't have to use a separate stick figure to make it blink So there's the Spinosaurus in the quadrupedal walk now we're gonna have it in a biped now this Spinosaurus is for my documentary series so it won't be made to the public. Sorry to tell that, but a lot of my stick figures will not be public and will not be given to many people. Probably I'm holding on to everything quite a bit for a while because things in the community aren't really going easy peasy lemon squeezy. Anyways, this is a Spinosaurus for the documentary series, so it's kind of accurate. It's got a few things that are different too. The Spinosaurus has whiskers, if you can see. This thing has whiskers. Now, there's a theory going around that's saying Spinosaurus has whiskers. And it's also saying that it may not have whiskers. It's from where the, there's like the little holes in the snouts, the sensory pressure sensors on the snout, like a crocodile. Um, it's believed that the Spinosaurus may have had whiskers there in the, in the theory. And 
then it, to contradict it, it may not have. They may have just been little holes that it could sense. and So like sinuses, you know. And the reason why I've got the Spinosaurus in a bipedal stance and the best thing I made about the Spinosaurus is apparently in 28, this year, it has been believed that the Spinosaurus is also theorized to be a biped again. So it's kind of hard to figure that out, but I thought just in case, I'll sort of make it a both biped and quadruped stick figure. And I was able to do that, thank goodness. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a tutorial on a biped animal running. Not running, walking. You wanted to walk cycle. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm doing a running. I can read your comments. I do read comments sometimes. Not all the time because, you know, don't want to add any more stress to anything. But I do read the comments. And uh, there's no need to be repetitive every video. If I say that I'm going to do it and I don't make the video after that, I'm going to make the I'm going to make the video eventually. There's no need for constant asking. But don't worry about it. It'll get here sometime. Anyways, that, you're basically doing the same thing that you did with the quadrupedal stance. Just use the onion skin. You just got to move the body a bit differently. See, it moved up quick. It wouldn't move up quick like that, but just to make the thing a bit quicker. And the tweening sort of gave it a few more frames when it moved up. Instead of like it just like, oh, it magically teleported like that. So that's the good thing about tweening. See here, I moved the tail just a little bit. That's just another sign for the realism. I made a little mistake there, as you can see. Uh, one part of the stripes on the tail is sort of connected to the to a different piece than it should be. Uh, that's subject to change. This stick figure is subject to change. Just in case, like, new scientific news has been brought in or I've messed up on something. <laughs> So, once again, I'm going to be moving the head a little bit, just to add more realism as always. Always, if you, well, not always. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But what I do is I always want to move a body part a little bit differently. It gives a little bit more realism that, you know, this is, you know, every body part is going to move in a different sort of way. Just not too drastically, though. I don't want to have a head floating too f far from the body than it should <laughs> but unless you're making like animations with just a just a single uh, stick figure it'll be much easier because it's just the whole thing it's easier to move the body around a little bit better anyways guys that is it for the tutorial um, I might make a few more things in the far future to help out you know if it if it helps I'm not sure if this is gonna help if it doesn't help I'm really sorry that it didn't 
Um, I tried. I tried my best with it. But I hope it was helpful. And I thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching. Uh, stay tuned for Rodan Unearthed and a few Halloween-related videos. So that is all. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in more videos and creations. Bye-bye.